Hey guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Dalmore Portwood Reserve. Stick around. All right, so we're looking at a Dalmore today, which is everyone's favorite brand. If you ask any single malt enthusiast anywhere in the world what their favorite whiskey is, 99 out of 100 times, they're gonna tell you it's Dalmore. Okay, fine, maybe not. They're nobody I know's favorite. Uh, most people kind of look down on Dalmore, and for good reason. Uh, they have very, very colored whiskeys. They have loads of overpriced, no age statement whiskeys. Uh, their age stated stuff, still overpriced. Uh, weak ABVs. Um, and beyond all that, they tend to be very cask forward, cask dominated whiskeys, so not one for the purists either. Just across the board, not for enthusiasts. However, the bottle is cool and I think it's a brand that sells really well with non-enthusiasts. And personally, I don't hate Dalmore, not as much as some other people do. I get the criticisms for sure, uh, but they're not the only brand out there selling overpriced whiskeys with weak specs. Diageo. Allergies. But yeah, I do get why people come down particularly hard on Dalmore. I think the excess of caramel colorant, I think the flashy bottles, I think the over-the-top price tags, I mean, they're very illustrative, they're very demonstrative of everything we dislike in whiskey. I mean, you don't need to look any further than the King Alexander release, which is hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's a 40% ABV, it's extremely colored, uh, I'm sure it's chill filtered, uh, it's no age stated. Listen, I, I hear the whiskey itself is actually pretty good, and I'm sure there's some older stock in there and blah blah blah, but that's kind of a big f you to consumers. Still, I won't deny that they do have some whiskeys out there that I enjoy. I really like the Cigar Malt, but keep in mind, I bought that years ago. Since then, it's kind of skyrocketed in price, and I definitely wouldn't pay what they're asking for it now, but I did enjoy the bottle. Uh, the 12-year-old, Sherry Cast Select. Not the standard 12-year-old. It's called the Sherry Cast Select. I thought that was a beautiful whiskey. Uh, their standard age-stated core range, stuff like the 12, stuff like the 15, pretty uneventful, pretty forgettable whiskeys. Uh, the 18, I've not tried. It is incredibly overpriced. Yeah, they don't have a lot of stuff out there for me. Still, this one, the Portwood Reserve, did pique my interest. I picked it up about two years ago, and the price was not over the top. Um, but of course, in a shocking turn of events, it's since gone way up in price. That being said, it is still among their cheaper offerings. It's a no-age stated whiskey. It was released in 2018. It's matured in white American oak X bourbon casks, and then it's finished in tawny port pipes. Now, port maturation for me can be very hit or miss, but sometimes it is excellent. And I guess we could say the same thing about Dalmore, just the brand of Dalmore. Again, hit or miss can be excellent. Uh, so let's see where this one takes us. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, so as I said, one of the reasons I picked this up is it's one of the few Dalmores that comes out with a good ABV. This one is 46.5% ABV, which is nice to see. Uh, I'm not sure if it's chill filtered, but it's definitely enthusiastically colored um but as i always say abv is the big one for me and we do have that so i mean i i don't want to say good job so i won't okay so i do like dalmore bottles i'm a peacock i like having flashy bottles on my shelf and i'm not going to apologize for that and that works out because no one has ever asked me to apologize for that and that would be a really strange thing to ask someone to apologize for. Uh, but yeah, sturdy bottle, big shiny stag. I love it. Four out of five. In terms of information, there's very little here. There's not much on the bottle. The box tells us that the stag is a very regal symbol. So that's nice. Uh, to their credit, they do tell us a little bit about the casks. And the box does give us some tasting notes. But it's still very much a style over substance presentation. Bottle looks cool. On the nose, this is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. We get a lot of classic port flavors in here. So lots of berries, we get dark berries, we get uh, raspberries, blueberries, cranberries, uh, there's caramel, there's plums, there's oranges, there's toffee, there's creme brulee, there's sponge cake, there's praline. Uh, it's basically a fancy dessert at a high-end restaurant. Uh, and we also have some of Dalmore's signature leathery type notes in here. It's nice. 
pour the palette and finish. The arrival doesn't give us a very interesting texture, but it is full. It is mouth coating. I get white pepper. I get some very nice dark wine tannin type notes. Does get a little bit bitter, counterbalances the sweetness here. We of course get some berries. There's some white pepper in here. There's some like wood polish, furniture polish. And yes, I do drink furniture polish. I like my insides to sparkle. There's also dark chocolate in here. There's some red berries here. There's tobacco, there's leather, there's oak in the finish. Our finish is medium long. Okay, so this is pretty good, I'm happy to say. Uh, like I said, I do like some Dalmores, that Sherry Castle like 12 year old, that's cigar malt. And this is in the category of bottles that I genuinely enjoy. Now keep in mind, they have plenty of bottles out there that I don't buy, and I do buy the ones that I'm most likely to enjoy. So I'm not pulling the trigger on what I think will be a lesser bottle. That being said, this one of the three was probably the biggest risk, despite having the higher ABV. I'm not always a port guy. So I wasn't sure that I was gonna like this one, but I do think it paid off. That being said, of the three bottles I've been talking about so far, this is probably the one I like the least. Uh, the best would be Cigar Malt, of course, but it's also massively more expensive, and I definitely wouldn't recommend that one from a value perspective. The Sherry Cast Select 12-year-old is actually cheaper than this. Yes, it does have a lower ABV, but I think our flavors are better. But of course, I would say that I like Sherry Matured Whiskeys more than Port Matured Whiskeys. For a Port Matured Whiskey, I think this one works. Um, port can easily get very sweet. This one never gets sickly sweet. We have those heavy wine tannins that counterbalance all of that sweetness. Um, and I think while it is a cask forward whiskey, it's a cask dominated whiskey, at no point does it come across as a bomb. And I actually want to take this opportunity to say something nice about Dalmore, which is not something that a lot of people do. I think Dalmore has pretty good cask play. Uh, a lot of their whiskeys are very casky. They have a lot of, um, let's call them cask acrobatics, uh, which on paper shouldn't work, but oftentimes I feel like they do pull them off. Like there have been a few expressions from them where I looked at the cask breakdown and I thought, that's gonna be a bit much. I'm not sure they're gonna pull that off, and they do. And I say, wow. Then I say, I still paid too much for this, but wow. So yeah, I do think we have good cast play here. We have some nice flavors. We have classic port flavors. We have berries. We have nice whiny notes. And we have that Dalmore signature. Dalmore is very good, even with lower ABV whiskeys, at giving a certain richness and weight to their flavors, especially their cask imparted flavors. Uh, there's usually sort of like some, some kind of leather or tobacco worked in. It's very distinctive and it's very nice. So I do really like this one, uh, and that's reinforced by a video I shot a little while back where I did a side-by-side, -side, a blind side-by-side -side with four different Port Matured whiskeys, and at the end I ranked them as follows. I had number one was the Aaron Port Matured whiskey, number two was this one, the Dalmore, number three was the Glen Morangy 14-year-old Kintha Rubin, and the fourth one was Tomatin 14. So this one was among the better Port Matured whiskeys. But the thing is, of those four whiskeys, this one is the most expensive. Still, despite that price tag, it is a bottle that I enjoy. Uh, it's got that classic Dalmore signature that I thoroughly enjoy. I would describe it as a rich combination of casks, spices, leather, and tobacco. It's something I think Dalmore does really well, and it works well here. So my score here is going to be 86. I do think it's one of the better port matured options out there. Now, when I did that blind tasting, the Aaron came out on top, but that was just that tasting. Uh, I think broadly speaking, I would rank this on par with that Aaron. I would say it's as good. Uh, where Aaron gives us more weight, more intensity, I would say this one gives us a little bit more complexity and a little bit more richness. So depends what you want. Uh, definitely recommended for Dalmore fans, recommended for port fans. It's a good one. So for value, I don't think it's a great buy. I think it was fine when I bought it a while ago, but now it's a little bit too expensive, not over the top. And I think if you are a Port fan, a Dalmore fan, and this is one that you're interested in trying, it is worth picking up. And I gotta say, if we look at a bottle like the Glen Morangy 14-year-old Kinta Rubin, I do like this more, but I don't think it's a better value buy. I think the Glenmo is the better value buy. I think we're getting more bang for buck with that one, and it is a very nice whiskey. This one is not crazy expensive, and I think if you are set on Dalmore or if you're set on Port Matured whiskeys, this is a great option. Otherwise, try it at a bar. It's good.
Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Always appreciated. And as usual, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Dalmore Portwood Reserve here? Have you tried any other Dalmores? What's your favorite Dalmore? You can let me know down below. Also, in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.